Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here and welcome to a new episode. I go to gaming conventions to play games, obviously, but one of the things I really enjoy uh, seeing at gaming conventions are uh, dioramas or displays that have miniatures, whether they're fantasy or science fiction or other, in their natural habitat. That may mean like, you know, fantasy miniatures in some sort of dungeon setting or sci-fi miniatures in some sort of like urban sprawl. I always go out of my way to try to take photographs uh, of these kinds of things. And you often find some of the, the best ones at the booths for various games. A lot of game companies will hire people to create dioramas and they'll put them in glass cases with miniatures. And, you know, it's just a, a really good marketing idea to, to see the game uh, with painted minis and terrain and stuff like that. Now, one of the drawbacks to taking photos of the dioramas that you see in person is they are flat. They are two-dimensional. I have always been a fan of like 3D. I like 3D movies. Um, sometimes they give me a headache, <laughs> but I, you know, you wear the glasses and you watch a, a movie and that 3D uh, effect just always has blown me away. I even love the old red and blue, you know, lenses with the old school stuff. So I started thinking about, you know, how how could I capture that that 3D view of a diorama and take it with me. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to use uh, a, a, an old and well-known technology of taking two images and putting them side by side. One photo or one image is taken to represent what your right eye sees. The left image is taken so that it represents what your left eye sees. And when your brain takes the, the light from the right and the left, your brain is what actually gives you that, that depth perception or that ability to view things three-dimensionally. So long, long ago, people figured out uh, that you could, you could take a photo and, uh, from, from one position and shift it slightly and take another photo, put those together, and then use a special device, and I don't even know what the device is. Somebody can comment and tell me, but I've seen them in like antique stores and stuff. It's almost like the Viewmaster. If you had a Viewmaster when you were a kid, that's what you were doing. Those round circles, they would have two objects, one on opposite sides of the circle. So you put it in, and you would use the lever to rotate, and when you would look through the eye, eye holes, your left eye was seeing a left image, your right eye was seeing a right image, and your brain was doing the crunching to convert that into a 3D image. It's really easy to do that uh, with your mobile phone, and all you need is something that allows you to look at those two side-by-side -side images uh, and allow your brain to, um, to merge them. Now, the, uh, the, the thing you look through has to divide it has to force the left eye to only see one image and the right eye to only see one image. So if you look at this right here, you see the same picture on the left or right, but you can't just look at it and it becomes 3D because my left eye, although it can see the left portion, it's also seeing the right and the right is seeing the left. It doesn't work, but, and I'll put a link to this in the description below. If you buy something very inexpensive like this, I think this was about $3, and again, I'll put a link below. When you put the, when you hold this up, it's kind of hard to look through without it. There's a there's like a lens in there, and it, it forces the left eye to look at one image and the right eye to look at another, and when you hold this up to about you know six or seven inches in front of your face, you get to a certain point where all of a sudden the image becomes three-dimensional. And you'll just have to trust me on this. It works. If you've never used a Viewmaster, you're going to have to try this out. But if you've used a Viewmaster, you know it works. The question for me became, how can I use this to get those dioramas in 3D? Well, the way you do this is you set your camera phone to square. You don't you don't want to use long portrait. You could, uh, or, or uh, landscape. You want a square image, just like that. I'm, am I regressing here? Um, you want to take a picture of something, and then you want to shift your camera, the camera right there. Think of the camera as your eyeball. You want 
you want to take a picture where your right eye would be, and then you want to move the camera to where your left eye would be, and you want to move it on the same horizontal plane. You can't do you can't take one here and then take one down here. It has to be moved horizontally like so, just like your eyes are side by side. So if you take one picture, you move it and you take another picture and you've done things correctly, you can take those two pictures and either print them out or you can use a graphics program and just put them side by side and then use one of these to look at them and you get the 3D image. So in this crafting video, I, this is going to be a really short one. I'm going to show you how to make a little contraption that you could take to gaming conventions. You could take it to the beach. You could take it anywhere you want. And what it will do is it will help you hold your phone to take those two images. Now the, the other secret is the, the photos cannot be taken too far apart. They have to, you know, everybody's eyes are a little different. If you measure from the center of one pupil to the center of the other on my face, it's going to be shorter or wider than another person. Our eyes are all slightly different. So what you need to do is you need to know what that distance is. And if you don't have somebody to help you measure it, you can sort of just guess it, okay? You can, you can, your eyes are very forgiving. But what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna make a little sort of a, a jig that will help you to guide your phone on the same plane and move the camera lens an equal distance to represent your eyeballs. And then I'm gonna show you how to take those images, uh, put them in a digital document, and then use, use, the, uh, use this device. My hope, my hope here is, what would be really, really cool is if all of the um, crafters out there, when they make a diorama or they paint miniatures, I mean, it doesn't have to be a diorama, it could just be painting a miniature. But how much, how cool would it be if we all started taking those two pictures and putting them together in a file and then sharing that on Facebook pages, such as the, the Tabletop Crafters Guild, where we make terrain. And then what people could do is they could just blow that image up on their screen and put these on and they would be able to see your miniature in 3D. They would be able to see your terrain in 3D. And if you had miniatures on the terrain, it will look three-dimensional. It would be very, very cool. Uh, I'm going to do some of these. I'm going to start posting some photos and things like that on the Tabletop Crafters Guild to show you how this works. But let's get to the tabletop. Let's get, uh, let's get making, and let me show you how you can make something that will help you take these kinds of photos. All right, the first step you're going to want to do is to measure the distance between your eyes. And I'm specifically talking about the pupils, the black dots on your eyes. You could get a, you know get somebody to help you and just hold a ruler up to your face and get a rough estimate, or you can cheat. I, I can cheat by taking this, and I know that when I look through it, my eyes are pretty much centered. So all I have to do is place a ruler here. Now, if I want to find the exact center, it's three eighths, and here come over one, two, three. It's three eighths. So what I need to do is measure the distance from here. To here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There are 20 eighths, which is what? 2 and 4 eighths, so 2 and a half inches. 2 and a half inches from the center of this dot or window to the center of this. If yours is 2 and 3 quarters, don't freak out. If it's 2 and 1 quarter, don't freak out. Everybody's eyes are slightly you know, there's a, there's a different width between it, okay? Um, the main thing is you just want to get close. Get as close as you can uh, because what you're doing is you're simulating your eye distance, all right? I'm fortunate that just uh, mine appears to, um, to match up to, to this. Um, once you get that down, make a note of it, and we'll start on the uh, jig. All right, next what you want to do is you want to find something that can serve as a base. It doesn't have to be heavy, but it shouldn't be paper flimsy either. I've got this wood block. Uh, it doesn't bend, which is good. So, and it's wider than two and a half. Um, remember that measurement for your eyes, the distance between the pupils, you need to have something that's a little bit greater than that, but some, you don't want something like 12 inches long. It's just, you don't need that much. This thing looks to be one, two, three, four, five inches long, which is fine. So 
The other thing you want to do is grab some paint sticks, paint stirrers. You can get these from the hardware store. Now I'm fortunate these actually have inches. And so what I'm going to do is I want to, I'm just going to measure the width of this, which is, it's in white, which, you know, if you're going to make a ruler on it, make it so you can read it. Uh, it is four and three eighths. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go out in the, uh, in the garage and I'm just going to cut two of these to four and three eighths. So you'll need two, two of your stir sticks cut to a length of whatever base you use. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing. Once you have your two pieces cut out, now granted, yours may be a little different than mine, all right? These are four and three eighths. You're going to want to glue one of the pieces to your base as straight as you can get it. Uh, you don't have to glue it to the front. I'd glue it more towards the center, uh, but don't glue it right on the center line, just maybe a little offset. And I would use wood glue if at all possible, um, especially if you're gluing wood to wood. Wood glue is absolutely going to be so strong when, uh, when it dries. Okay, once this glue has set, you want to take your phone, the one you'll be using. So you want to set your phone in here and you're going to glue the other one in the front so it holds the phone vertical. You don't want to glue it so tight that it's hard to get the phone in there. It can have a little wobble, just a little bit. Don't go crazy with it. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you want to make sure that the, the phone can slide. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Take the phone, just stick it in there. Uh, it's easiest to stick it in the middle. Make sure it's flush with the back, and then just drop the piece in front there. Make sure, make sure you can move the phone. See how I can slide it? There we go. I just don't want it to be super tight, just enough, and I'm going to pull my phone out, and I'll let that dry, and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, now it's almost ready to be used. Um, what you're going to do, because everybody's phone is also different, you want to make note of where your camera is. All right, my camera lens uh, is right there. Uh, what I can do is, it's not, you know, it's not flush with the left edge or whatever. It's kind of a pain. They never, you know, center them right with the phone. It's always usually on the left or right side. What you're going to do is you're going to place your phone in here where you can see the camera. And what you want to do is you want to line your camera up with the left edge of the uh, of your your brace. I'll call that the brace. All right. So if I if I just draw a 90 degrees, the camera is right there. All right. So what I can do is I can make a mark on here. You can see I've done some tests. So I'll probably end up painting this and making some better marks. I'm going to make a solid line here, which tells me sort of where the right edge. Um, from looking at it from this way goes. Now, if the camera is on that edge, we want to slide it this way. We want the camera to be two and a half from this edge right here. So if I look at this, it just so happens that I made the mark right there. That means the distance from the camera to this edge is exactly two and a half. That just worked out for me. Your case may differ, your phone may differ. So what that means is if I'm looking, let's say I'm the subject of the photograph, the person taking the picture will line the camera up with this edge, take a photo. Then they will slide the entire thing over so that the camera is over that two and a half line and take the second picture. Okay, you may find, as I have, that when you put your camera in, the the button to take the picture may be out of reach. There's a couple ways you can fix this. One, you could cut a hole in the wood where you plan on having your phone, or you can just do what I'm doing here and put a spacer in there. I'll glue this down once I'm done, but it will raise it will raise it just enough that I can take a picture of me. Now, you want whatever the subject is. Let's say you're taking the photo and you really want the dioramas to be the center. You need about 12 inches or more between you, your camera, and the object. If it's too close, when you move the, the phone, 
it's going to disappear from, from view. And let me show you. So you can see the tip of the pen right here in the, in the uh, I don't know if you can see it, but trust me, it's there. Tip of the, it's within photo, it's in, inside the photo. However, when I move this over to where the camera is in front of that, the blue pen has disappeared. All right. That's why you need to be shooting things that are sort of out further away. This will require some practice. I've uh, I've been playing with it and I've I've kind of figured out where the best spot for my camera is to take pictures. It also helps if you are at the level of where you're taking the picture. Now, if you're taking a, a, a 3D picture of a group of people uh, out like 10 feet in front of you and then there's an ocean behind them, it's going to give that image 3D you know, that 3D effect. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to need to find a place to rest your base so it doesn't move. Or you could try to hold it with your hands and move the camera without adjusting the height up or down of your base. But it might be better. You'll, you'll want to practice with this and you'll figure it out. So I'm going to go take some test pictures. And in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to make those dual images that can be used with the 3D viewer. Now in order to make the pictures, you're going to have to know how big to make the squares. Now you're going to find if you make them too big, you're not going to be able to get the 3D effect with your viewer because the pictures are too big. And if you get them too small, you're going to lose the detail. For me, the ultimate cheat is just to see this came, this is the container for these. These uh, are flat and then you fold them to make them you know, into this little box. But they come in this little sleeve with a test photo. So the easiest way to do this is to actually measure the photos. It's not that white line. It's, it's actually just a little bit inside. And it turns out that the width is actually five inches exactly. So my guess is this will be two and a half. And it's two and three quarters. So these photos are actually not square. They're, is that right, two and three quarters? Yeah. So they're not perfectly square. You could, I'm going to use square. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to resize my photos down so that they are two and a half inches wide, two and a half inches tall, two and a half inches wide, two and, two and a half inches tall with a line that where they will come together. And that's how I'll duplicate this effect. All right. So let me show you how this is going to work. Uh, what you're going to do is you want to set your phone to take square pictures. So go ahead and set it to square and then you're going to place it inside your base here. I'm placing it so the left edge is aligned with that blue line right there. All right, so I'm going to have it facing that direction. I'm taking a picture out here just so I can fit this in the screen for you. Next one I do is just grab some objects. Here's a paint bottle. I'll put that right here. And here is uh, some tacky glue and I'm going to put that back behind it about six inches so that you can definitely see the depth there. And then my hot glue gun is further behind. So now what I do is I make sure that the objects are in frame, they are, and I take a picture just by pressing the button. All right, I took a picture. Now I'm going to slide it over so the camera lens is in line with that blue line. But what I figured out was all I need to do is make a line for this edge, which is that heavy line right there. So I slide the phone over until that edge is lined up with this blue one. And then I take another picture. And then there is the left eye. There's the right eye. Now you'll notice, you can see the difference. Look at the tacky glue bottle, how far it is from this left edge. Now it's a little further. This is, remember, the last image I took was the left eye, and then the, um, the first one was the right eye. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two images and pull them into the software and show you how you can line these up and size them so you'll be able to use them with your 3D viewer. Okay, in this, uh, in this example, I am using an application called Pages, which is uh, a Mac application. But you can really use any simple graphics program like Inkscape. Um, you know, I'm not sure of all the different types, but what you want is you want something that can let you draw two, two and a half inch squares and put them side by side. This basically just gives you something to shoot for when you're sizing the images. Now take the two photos that you shot, the left one and the right one, and you're going to import those into your application. Now here I've got to resize them down. Pages will let me uh, match an existing shape. So I can just drag it and it snaps to that two and a half by two and a half inch square. 
Then I go and I import the right eye view. I do the exact same thing. Uh, sh uh, just squeeze it down to the right shape or size, pop it in there. And then what you do is you export this image as like a, a JPEG or a PNG, or you could just take a screenshot of it in your on your uh, computer and then send that image to your desktop or in my case, send it to your phone. My phone is five inches uh, wide by about two and a half inches tall and the image fits perfectly in my phone. And that's it. That is how you use this little stand with your phone to create a pair of photos that can be turned into a 3D photo uh, with those viewers. Now one thing I have discovered since then is after you make the two photos side by side in whatever uh, graphics program you use, transfer them over to your phone. Now your phone may vary, but what I found was on my iPhone, it is a perfect fit two and a half, two and a half inches. And when I use it like this, I can hold the viewers up and look at my phone and it really just pops out as 3D. This is nice because uh, I can take this with me. I carry my phone with me everywhere. But those viewers that I showed you, they collapse flat. So you could put them in a backpack if you're going to a con or whatever. But um, it's really, it's kind of a nice uh, thing to share with people. Um, I, I showed it to my sons and they were just like, whoa, you know, um, there's really something cool when you look at it and you see two two-dimensional images and then you hold the viewers up and all of a sudden it becomes a 3D image. So I highly, uh, I'd love for you to check this out and see if it works for you. I will put a link below to where you can purchase uh, the the viewers they're very inexpensive and uh, and obviously just make one of these it's very simple and it works all right that's all I have for you this week uh, n please remember to come and join us over at the tabletop crafters guild I'm one of the six uh, guild masters over there and we host this Facebook page where people who like to make terrain for their games can come and post photos of their stuff, they can ask questions, have discussions. It's just a great place to uh, to hang out with people of shared interests. Also, I'd love to have you over at the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page. Please come join me over there. Uh, I post videos and other, other things that don't make it over to the Tabletop Crafters Guild. Um, and uh, but would, would love to have you there as well. And then finally, thank you to my patrons for supporting the Tabletop Engineer with your $1 a month um, uh, fee, I guess, Patreon fee. Uh, if you're not a Patreon, I would love to have you as a patron. Uh, just go to patreon.com slash the Tabletop Engineer. This link will be below as well. And for just $1 a month, you're going to get access to a lot more videos than I ever put up on YouTube. Uh, I do bigger projects. I do live crafting. Uh, I do giveaways. I do. I have special videos that are unlisted that don't make it uh, out on YouTube that are only for patrons. So if that is of interest to you, please, uh, please come and become a patron. Um, it allows me to continue to make videos like this one, and um, it uh, and I appreciate the support of my existing patrons. So that's all I have for you this week. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. I'll see you again next week. Take care.